Good afternoon. My name is Emily Rauer Davis, assistant chaplain and member of the class of 1999. On behalf of all the Holy Cross chaplains, I'm delighted to welcome you to this mass for the solemnity of St. Ignatius Loyola. Although we aren't able to gather everyone here in St. Joseph Memorial Chapel for this celebration, we remain a communitas ad dispersionum, a community dispersed, but one. I invite you to full, conscious, and active participation in our liturgy this afternoon from wherever you are joining us as we enter into spiritual communion with one another and with our God. Let us begin our celebration in song. Christ be beside me, Christ be before me, Christ be behind me, King of my heart, Christ be within me, Christ be below me, Christ be Christ be in all hearts thinking about me, Christ be on all tongues telling of me, Christ be the vision in eyes that see. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My friends, we Jesuits of Holy Cross are delighted to be able to celebrate this Eucharist with you. We have missed you. You have been in our prayers whenever we've celebrated Mass at Champi and it is a great joy to be with you today. Today, of course, we celebrate the great gift of the Church in our world of St. Ignatius Loyola, whose charism, especially the spiritual exercises, has animated the mission of the College since 1843. We are proud and humbled to carry on that charism with you in what he called this least society. The Society of Jesus has always adapted and remade ourselves as the needs and reality of the times have changed, and today we make up another adaptation by creating a new province, the USA East Province, made up of Jesuits of New England, New York, and Maryland. And we will pray this Mass today for God's grace and guidance in this new endeavor. As you might know, the new provincial superior is an alum, Father Joseph O'Keefe, class of 76. So I think the Holy Cross family will be well represented in this new province. And so my friends, pray with us. Coming together as one family united in love, let us call to mind the abundant mercy of God. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you came in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Kyrie Kyrie 
Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And knowing that our God does have mercy, we give him glory by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace, peace to people of goodwill. We praise, praise you, we bless you, we adore, adore you, we glorify, we glorify you. We give, give you thanks for your great, great glory. Lord, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, oh God, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, only the God and Son, Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take, take away the sins of the, the world, receive, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you, you alone, alone are the Holy One, you alone, alone, alone are the Lord, you alone, alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy, the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the glory, and glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who raised up St. Ignatius of Loyola in your church to further the greater glory of your name, grant that by his help we may imitate him in fighting the good fight on earth and merit to receive with him a crown in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We listen now to the word of God. <clears throat> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day, I am an object for laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Rescued. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to Jews or Greeks or the church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops, he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions 
cannot be my disciple. Friends, the Gospel of the Lord. In a drawing for a 1941 issue of New Yorker magazine, cartoonist Peter Arno depicted a scene showing various military personnel and ground crew racing towards a crashed plane. And the plane's designer, with a roll of blueprints under his arm, walking away, muttering to himself. The caption read, well, back to the old drawing board. And as best as I can tell, that was the first time that that phrase was used. It certainly was not the last time. It's been almost five months now since we emptied out our campus to help flatten the curve. And the days and weeks since have been full of surprises, challenges, griefs, and anxieties. All of us, current students, professors, staff, and administrators, alumni, and friends working in every field and in every place. We have all had to go back to the drawing board somehow, changing our plans and ways of proceeding based on fluctuating geographic circumstances and what we learn about the virus with each passing day. And it's been difficult, of course, dealing with all of these changes. Today, though, we might remember that as we might struggle with changing circumstances, we are in good company. For during the course of his life, St. Ignatius Loyola often found himself stymied in his own plans when outside forces beyond his control led him back to the drawing board to reevaluate and restart. Early after his conversion, he longed to go to the Holy Land, to walk where Christ himself walked. But once he arrived, the officials in Jerusalem threw him out almost as soon as he arrived, because this zealous pilgrim who dressed as a beggar made everyone nervous. So Ignatius changed course. Back in Europe, while preaching about his own spiritual journey, and offering help to others to grow in their relationship with God, Ignatius ran afoul of church authorities, so he pivoted and sought ordination as a priest with his heart set on ministering overseas in India or China. But he never went. Instead, Father Ignatius spent the last portion of his life hunched over a desk in Rome drafting the constitutions that were needed for the religious order that he and his friends from college had founded some years before. In each of those instances, Ignatius of Loyola had to go back to the drawing board to take stock of changed circumstances and to plot a new course of action. But going back to the drawing board doesn't always mean starting from scratch. And for Ignatius, it meant going back to some fundamental principles that could guide his steps, principles that are revealed in these readings that we just heard, readings chosen for the celebration of his feast. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped, we heard in the book of Jeremiah. Well, sometimes this word is translated as seduced or enticed. For Ignatius, this intense relationship with God between the lover and the beloved was the bedrock of every decision and every action he took. Even when he had to retreat or change his approach, Ignatius always oriented himself by keeping sight of the God who willed his good, who called him into being, and who gave him new life. 
In the first letter to the Corinthians, we heard, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. This essentially became the motto of Ignatius's new religious order, A-M-D-G, as well as a touchstone for discernment that's been handed down ever since. Between this or that, between here or there, which will bring God greater glory? Back at the drawing board, this became the guiding principle of Ignatius's life and the life of every Jesuit and every Jesuit work. And finally, in the gospel, we heard a challenge from Christ. Every one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. That is how Ignatius understood how he could best serve the God whom he had fallen in love with, free from material possessions, free as well from inordinate attachments to things like status, wealth, and power. Back at the drawing board, Ignatius let all these things fall away, lest they be a distraction, keeping him from the Lord. My friends, we're all back at the drawing board in these days, as we find ourselves in a moment of reckoning here in our country in multiple ways. Financially, as we deal with the fallout of a global pandemic, with millions unemployed and facing eviction in the coming weeks, and the poor, of course, are in a particularly precarious position. Racially, as we continue to deal with the deleterious long-term effects of slavery, then segregation, and of course, institutional racism that have real-world consequences for our black brothers and sisters. And spiritually, as we might struggle with our faith, perhaps feeling as if God is absent or has abandoned us in these difficult days. But know this and know it well, God is here, my friends, inviting us back to the drawing board and to recover there, like St. Ignatius before us, some fundamental principles, even in the midst of strife. For this invitation comes from a God whose love entices us, from a God who challenges us to build or rebuild a world that resembles the glorious kingdom of heaven and from a God who dares us to live our lives differently in order to make that happen. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us strengthen each other in these fundamental principles of our faith by professing, by making, professing our creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, the Father, God, and from life, right, true God, and true God. He got not made unsubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was encountered with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism full of the of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. On this solemnity of St. Ignatius, let us with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For our world, in the grip of pandemic and a struggle for racial justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, the College of Bishops, Father General Arturo Sosa, and Father Provincial Joseph O'Keefe, Class of 76, and those who lead with them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the Worldwide Society of Jesus, lay, religious, and clergy collaborators, for those who serve in parishes, retreat houses, social justice ministry, and education, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are prayer. For the many and varied ministries of the new U.S. US East province dedicated to God's greater glory and the help of souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, you are prayer. For Jesuits in formation, and for those in retirement and health care centers, praying for the church and the society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the students and the wider community of Holy Cross, and for the coming academic year, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all in this time of pandemic who suffer from illness, grief, fear, or need, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have passed on to eternal life, especially the deceased of the Society of Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord eternal God, mercifully hear the prayers we raise to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our own good and the good of all God's holy church. May these offerings we make to you as we celebrate St. Ignatius be pleasing, Lord God, and grant that the sacred mysteries which you have made the fount of all holiness may sanctify us too in the truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you summon us to imitate the, dis the discipline of St. Ignatius, that we may hear the voice of the Spirit with docile and trusting hearts. And you move us to conform our life to Christ so that we might imitate him, the model of every virtue. Through him, O Father of mercy, we are preordained by you that by responding to your gifts, we may complete the journey of faith, be sustained by the support of hope, and be refreshed by the strength of love. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the hosts of the angels, we sing to you with all our hearts as we cry out, as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at his command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. <clears throat> Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Ignatius Loyola, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> that all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory, glory are yours now and forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and you say to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. We share with each other some sign that we are at peace with one another. Peace, 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 peace. 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 <laughs> On your stay, Tolis pecata mundi miserere nobis on you stay qui tolis pecata mundi miserere nobis on you stay Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin from our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say, say the word, word and my, and my soul, soul shall be held. We invite those of you participating with us by live stream to join in our Eucharistic feast by making your own spiritual communion at this time. Thank you. 
Take my heart, O oh Lord, take my hopes and dreams. Take my mind with all its plans and schemes. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough for me. Take my thoughts, O oh Lord, and my memory. Take my tears, my joys, my liberty. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough. I surrender, Lord, all I have and hold. I return to you your gifts untold. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are enough. When the darkness falls on my final days, take the very breath that sang your praise. Give me nothing more than your love and grace. These alone, O oh God, are Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former lives to newness of faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. From the founding of the of the Society of Jesus, even to this day, you have given us what we need. 
your love, and your grace. Bless the United States East Province, newly established this day. Bless us, companions of your son, sons of Ignatius, brothers, and friends in the Lord. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one mind and heart within your holy church. Inflame our hearts that we may continue to teach, to minister, to pray, and to collaborate with and serve the people of God, all for your greater glory. May this good work begun by you be brought to completion for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our King and our God, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And my almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.